What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Chad, aka Atlas DMD student. Please don't forget the student. And today, today we're going to be talking about how I got into medical school. All right, and we're gonna approach this thing in three phases. First, we're gonna talk about high school, then we're gonna talk about college, and then we're gonna talk about what I did in the post-grad life to help me get into medical school. Um, so disclaimer, one, I, I've been blessed. I mean, some things, they just happen. I can't really explain to you. I'll do my best to try. The second thing is that what works for me may not work for you. What works for you may not work for me. So in this day and age, getting into medical school can be really daunting. It can be competitive. Trust me, I know. But um, my key thing for you, which you'll see in my story, is I want you to do the things that you're passionate about. Do the things that you love. Don't worry about checking the boxes. Don't worry about being the perfect applicant. There is no perfect applicant and all this stuff out on paper, you're gonna find out why. For me, what I look like on paper doesn't define who I am, all right? All right, so earliest exposure. Um, when I was a kid, I had the privilege of actually seeing my first, first uh, black physician. He was a pediatrician and he was the only doctor I knew for the first, uh, I don't know, 18 some odd years of my life. And I would go to the doctor, you know, I was, very inquisitive, I asked a lot of questions. My mom didn't get a word in, and he ended up giving me this model of the respiratory system to help explain the things I kept asking him. He used to say, oh, that's gonna be my doctor, and I was like, mm -mm. That was my earliest exposure, you know, God rest his soul, rest in peace to him, because he was a major influence, I actually wrote a letter of recommendation to get me into medical school um, later on. High school. I was focused on what most young, attractive males are focused on, which was sports, girls, and uh, more sports. Be honest with you, I still, you know, I was interested in some of the arts. I wanted to possibly look into acting, so I took a drama class in high school. I was, you know, singing in talent shows, playing music in talent shows, public speaking engagement type thing. Other than that, I was just a regular kid who wanted to do something. I wanted to do something health related, maybe a personal trainer, maybe a PT, maybe a nutritionist. And given the school that I chose to go to, the best major for me personally was health science. So college, to answer your question from the last video, I gave you the hint of where I chose to go to school, where I played football. I played football for the great three time national championship uh, winning team, the Clemson Tigers. So yeah, I went to Clemson University, majoring in health science. I was a walk-on football player there. I was an okay student by, by medical school terms. You know, I did well in my classes that were public health related, psychology, sociology. I love that because I just love studying people. I got in a lot of debates with my sociology professor. I went into college with a lot of the high school mindset, which was I could not study and then still do well, which I fell asleep in classes in high school. And then I tried that in college and didn't realize that my first test was written in the syllabus and not the teacher was gonna say it out loud. So I walked in a week into class realizing we got tested. It was a learning experience for me. Um, I didn't necessarily do well in science classes. I did not get an A in any, any, science class I took. The only thing close to that is I got a B in chemistry. Um, but every single other class, I got C's, D's, or an F, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, so really, I can walk you through what I made in those science classes that tell schools how well you are going to perform in medical school. The intro biology, both of those were C, chemistry, two B's, took anatomy and got a C. I was on a D all the way up until the last exam. Studied my butt off with a student who needed a 16 on the final exam to get an A, and she studied. But I studied with her and got an A on that one to give me a C in the class. Had some random kinesiology course that I thought was interesting and still got a D in. Physics, B, maybe in somewhere in there, E or C. You get the point. Organic chemistry. I ran from organic chemistry for the longest to say that I didn't want to go to medical school. Got to organic chemistry, failed it. Took it again, got a D. Went to the second part, a little better, got a C. Case in point, these classes won't define you as an applicant, but they will determine what you'll have to do 
to get in to certain schools, which I'll cover. Now let's talk about the time in which I can actually consider myself a pre-med. This is when I kind of settled in on the fact that I really wanted to go to medical school. My senior year or third year of undergraduate leading into graduate school. I hadn't passed organic chemistry yet, and I still need to take biochemistry, I still need to take the MCAT, and all of that stuff that other pre-meds have been toiling about for the longest. So I was trying to figure out what was my best plan of action, and I ultimately chose to do a master's program in education. And you may ask why. Well, one, obviously I didn't like science that much. So when I had an advisor say, oh, you should get another degree in biology or chemistry. What? That wasn't gonna happen. I'm gonna do what I love to do. I love working with students. I love, you know, advising. I have been working with the advising department since I was an undergrad, seeing students in orientation. So I chose to do master in educational counseling, student affairs. Here is where my story of like, I grind for this. I was a grind hard, grind now, play later type of person in this period of time. What I had to do was I took biochemistry the summer before going into my graduate school program. And then when I started grad school, I took uh, my grad assistantship in the morning from about eight or nine until three. My lunch break at 12, I would go to my organic chemistry class. Class for my graduate program was at three o'clock. We'd be in class from like three or 3.30 to six or 6.30. Go to my organic lab twice a week from like 6.30 to 9.30. And then I would go home and do a repeat. So I did that my first year of grad school. That summer was when I was preparing for the MCAT. I'm gonna give you the short version of my MCAT story the first time, and then I'll tell you the long version in a separate video. I was working with high school students in a program, which I, shout out to them, Emerging Scholars. I, that was the highlight of my life still to this day. I worked with them, I was working with them all day and then trying to study at night. Wasn't a good idea. I ended up scoring 495 on the MCAT my first time. I really didn't know what that meant. Again, I was new to this whole pre-med process. I thought my 316 going towards 30 since my organic struggles and all that, I thought I was fine, cool. So I applied to medical school that cycle, which would have been like the 2017 cycle. I ended up getting two interviews and I'm like, Psh. All I need is the interview. They finna love me. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's how I thought of it. Went in, you know, I rocked my interviews. I was a natural interview person, had been doing them for a while. Got the reviews of, we love you as a person, everything. Your MCAT scores are just a little bit too low. I didn't know at the time, but I was in a little bit of a slump. I knew I needed to retake the MCAT. My mom was like, take it, you know, schedule it again, schedule it again, like the whole year. You know, I, I knew I wasn't gonna get in basically once they sent me that first initial rejection like late fall and then I knew I wasn't gonna get in after that so I got the final rejection from both places like March or April and I scheduled another MCAT for June hadn't opened the book yet oh my mama was sorry mom scheduled this test for June and still never opened the book in May I got a letter from my current institution you know what I mean I got a letter from them saying they were gonna offer a six-week MCAT prep program to help out completely free of charge shout out to the Summer Institute like, that was my saving grace. That was that sign from God I needed to say, bro, you're not done yet, because I was about to quit. I was like, I, I tried medical school. I right, ain't for me, let me go find something else. Did my six weeks in that, and really in that six weeks, that six weeks is where I learned what I had inside. So I wanna talk about exactly what happened during that program. So that program, think of it like a Kaplan course or any of those other college courses that you pay for. It was just through the university and we were taught by current medical students or like PhDs and stuff who were in PhD program. We met with the admissions committee throughout. We had in touch, you know, what, what we call lunch and learn meetings where we learned about certain topics and things like that to help with both our application and us as future clinicians. The core of it for me was, this was the first time in my life that there was no sport, there was no leadership, you know, friends, family, none of that. Like I went to this place, cut off all contact. Like I deleted social media off my phone. I ain't had no group me, no Facebook, no Instagram, no LinkedIn, no Twitter, no nothing. Had my girlfriend on a one hour call schedule, like nine or 10 o'clock at night. Call my parents for an hour, call my girlfriend for an hour, and then go to sleep. Our day was structured to where like eight in the morning, we was in class, eight to five, leave class, go hit the gym, walk back to the dorm we was at, and study. We took a practice test on every Saturday. We basically reviewed their practice tests and all that kind of stuff. So in that time period, those six weeks, I was dedicated. I looked at this, like I said, as God's second chance on my life to become a physician. I would stop at nothing to make sure I improved 
my score and got in. And the six weeks was from like June through the end of July. And I had my application in early, which in my pre-med series, we're gonna talk about the importance of that. So I had my app in like June 5th or 6th, I had my app in. I retook the MCAT after that program, like early August, my score went up five points. That sealed the deal for me. So if you're calculating, yeah, I got into medical school, my MCAT score ended up being 500. Again, and disclaimer, what worked for me, may not work for you, what works for you may not work for me. My sliding scale about how does Chad get into medical school, the score that I needed to get in was a 500. We're gonna talk about all of that again pre-med series about how to get into medical school. So fast forward now, I got into medical school on October the 16th, 2017 at 12 o'clock p.m. Yeah, it's, it's crazy I remember it like that. So I had been working as a pre-med advisor and midway through I was actually given the entire advising department. So I was doing pre-med pre-PT, pre-occupational therapy, pre-dental. I was pre-health everything and I was advising students. I truly enjoyed that time period. It did demonstrate in terms of my application going forward was I was an asset to medical students. Listen to this tip right here. I was a true asset to medical schools because I had the ability to speak to other people, to convince them, to educate them, to relate to them, to counsel them. All of these skills that were marketable to a school to say, hey, we can bring this black male in. Not only can he get things done in the classroom, but when we need representatives to go out and speak on our behalf, he's got that too. I'm your guy. Not only am I academically competent, proven by my improved MCAT score, I am the person that can also be very, very marketable for your schools. Know your worth and add tax. Like that's literally what I'm telling you. Know your worth, add tax, and make sure people know exactly what you bring to the table. So recap on my profile as a pre-med. I had to realize that I didn't really do well in undergrad by medical school terms. And I also had to realize, even when I was writing my personal statement, why I didn't do well. It wasn't that I wasn't capable, I just wasn't trying. I literally would go to class and be very, very satisfied saying I got a C in anatomy because I felt like I, don't, I, didn't, have, I didn't have a purpose. I didn't know I wanted to go to medical school, so I wasn't actively working towards anything. When I learned how to try is when I actually realized like, hey, you gotta grind this out. So for my athletes out there, you practice, hours on end, working out, you running sprints, you sweating, and you ain't trying to let nobody see you slacking, and you'll tear your heart out and leave it on the field or leave it on the court to make sure that you're a great player. That was me. The problem was I didn't know how to do that academically. I didn't know that, yo, you need to actually sit at this desk, study, gain these materials, get the concepts, and be good. Like, I remember going through Krebs cycle and all that, and I sat with the tutor. He was like, okay, run me through the Krebs cycle. And I was like, you mean the whole thing? Like, from the beginning? She was like, yeah. I didn't know we needed to know that. When I saw long processes like that, I said, I don't need to know that and kept it pushing. I limited what I could learn by feeling like it was too much. Wrong way to go about it. So once I realized that I wasn't trying my best, that was when I had to try to rectify that in my application process. When I went to grad school was when I started learning, like you're gonna have to grind for this. That schedule I had, boom, 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 all the stuff every day, I had to grind for that. When I started taking the MCAT and still working jobs, had to grind for that. I really had to understand like, there is a level of work that you need to accomplish and right now what you're doing, it ain't enough. When I got to that MCAT program, I sat down every night to study just thinking about, yo, you're not going back. This is your one shot, you gonna have to make it happen. So to all of my pre-meds out there who feel like you're making a subpar grade, I feel you. If you're not doing as well as you want the MCAT, I feel you. Also what I'm here to tell you is, listen, there's another level that you can get to. You just gotta find your way. Go back to that book, go back to that video, go back to it and say, what am I missing? What am I not grasping? What am I not working hard on? Also in my application, as you can see, I didn't have a lot of clinical hours. Wasn't surrounded by doctors. The one doctor that I knew, I shadowed him in high school. That was it. I wasn't focused on medical school then, so I didn't know what's important. Went through college not knowing what I wanted to do, so I definitely wasn't seeing it. The one shadowing experience I had was in a senior seminar class that required us to have an internship. I didn't know whether I wanted to do PT or um, be a physician. She said, hey, you can split it. I did 90 hours at a PT clinic and 90 hours with a physician. But outside of that, I had no, no shadowing, no clinical hours, and that was of concern too. So if you ask me today, Chad, given the deficiencies that you had, how did you get in to medical school? I would simply tell you this. I dedicated my application to including things that I truly, truly loved. 
I loved mentoring. I loved working with students. I was a student athlete. I had talents. And the one thing that I needed to be a great physician was an interest in pursuing medicine for the right reason. The reason that I really sat down and said, I really need to become a physician. The reason why I truly want this came in 2015. My grandmother passed away. I sat down and I thought about all the things that I enjoyed in life, which revolved around health and fitness. And then I also thought about the things I wanted to change in life. And upon her passing, I just kind of looked at the reasons why our black communities were suffering. And a lot of it was due to the eating habits and, and things that we deemed as just cultural things, but they were killing us. You know, she passed away from different comorbid diseases. And I truly didn't want that for my community. I didn't want to see people suffer anymore in that way. So yes, I had my first you know, introduction to medicine from a child and then seeing people get injured playing sports. Like it was a true experience like that, that let me know like you need to make an impact through medicine and carve your own path in that way. All of my mentoring, when I thought of all of my leadership experience, when I thought of my background in academics, when I thought of my background in athletics, I said, I truly enjoy helping people succeed, inspiring, motivating, counseling, and I love health and fitness. And I didn't want to see my black people suffer anymore. So I chose the career that I felt like I could be able to have the greatest impact in all of those areas and combine them into one. And when I explained that to an admissions committee in an interview, and I'm looking at them with this sort of you know, fortitude, fire in that belly. That's how you tell your story to get into a medical school. If you feel like on paper, you're not what other students are. I have no study abroad. I didn't have the, the clinical hours to scribe, EMT, none of that. The grades weren't 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. It was a 30. I had a graduate degree that was not in science, but I'm here to tell you those are the exact same reasons why some people will lead you to believe it's a no, but those are the reasons why it's a yes. Why? Because I did it my way. That was my talk. I believe all of us deserve a chance at success and accomplishing our dreams of medicine. Don't let anyone ever tell you that you're not good enough, that you're not smart enough, that you can't work hard enough. You can always do whatever it is on your mind, believe in yourself or nobody else will. It's Atlas DMD student. Please don't forget the student. See y'all next time. Peace. Yeah. <laughs>